As the Marine 1st Division edged nearer the city, commanders heard reports of two developing counterattacks by Iraqi forces. We fired on the two gathering points and it wasn't 30 minutes before we scattered them like rabbits out of the bush, said Myatt, the division commander. The Cobra's helicopter gunships and the LAV's light armored vehicles had a field day as a hunter-killer package to search out and destroy Iraqi equipment. On the way to their objective, the Kuwait International Airport, Task Force Ripper M60A1 Patton tanks destroyed about 100 Iraqi tanks and armored personnel carriers, including about 50 top-of-the-line Soviet T-72 tanks, 1st Marine Division Commander Maj. During the first day of combat operations 1st Platoon, D Company, 3rd Tank Battalion destroyed 15 Iraqi tanks. 1st Marine Division S Task Force Shepard suffered 14 Kia during combat operations en route to Kuwait International Airport. Task Force Taro was also a participant in the 1st Marine Division S combat operations. Task Force Papa Bear, C, and DCO, 1st Marine Division, who as the division reserve repelled a huge enemy counter-attack while defending the minefield breach. The 1st Marine Division also destroyed around 60 Iraqi tanks near the Bergen oil field without suffering any losses. A Iraqi counter-attack was broken up by fire from five Marine artillery battalions. A assault by the 22nd Brigade of the Iraqi 5th Mechanized Division was broken at the point of attack by Marine infantry. Company I of the 3rd Battalion, 9th Marines hit the Iraqi 22nd Brigade with close-range fire from their Dragon ATGMs and handheld anti-tank weapons. Company C, 1st Tank Battalion would destroy 18 Iraqi vehicles during this particular engagement. The 1st Marine Division lost one M60A1 tank clearing a path through a minefield. The 1st Marine Division encountered more Iraqi opposition as it proceeded to move north. Elements of the 1st Marine Division came into contact with the Iraqi 15th Mechanized Brigade, 3rd Armored Division. During this engagement the Marines destroyed an additional 46 enemy vehicles and took approximately 929 POWs. As the 1st Marine Division continued its advance it destroyed an additional 29 Iraqi combat vehicles and captured 320 POWs. During these engagements the most effective Iraqi unit appeared to be the Iraqi 449th Artillery Brigade. Marine Company C, 3rd Tank Battalion would have a tank damaged by Iraqi artillery fire. In return 1st Marine Division artillery would also prove its worth eliminating numerous enemy targets or driving off other Iraqi forces. The 1st Marine Division would encounter more Iraqi opposition along the way to the Kuwait International Airport destroying dozens of more Iraqi tanks and APCs while taking hundreds of additional POWs. Once the 1st Marine Division reached Kuwait International Airport they found what remained of the Iraqi 12th Armored Brigade, 3rd Armored Division defending it. The Marines destroyed 30 to 40 Iraqi T-72 tanks which had taken up defensive positions around the airport. The Marines also encountered T-62 tanks in dispersed and understrength platoon and company units. The Iraqi 3rd Armored Division losses included more than 250 T-55-62S and 70 T-72 tanks. Marine Reserve Unit Bravo Company, 4th Battalion, 4th Marine Division was assigned to the 2nd Marine Division. On February 25, 1991, Day 2 of the Desert Storm Ground War, Bravo Company 4th Tank Battalion was in a coil formation and awakened from a 25% watch to find 35 Iraqi Republican Guard tanks angling across their front, not realizing at the time that they were outnumbered 3 to 1. With their 13 M1A1 Abrams tanks, Bravo Company 4th Tank Battalion moved online to take out the 35 Iraqi Republican Guard tanks in less than 90 seconds. Bravo Company went on to destroy 59 tanks, 32 APCs, 26 non-armored vehicles, and an artillery gun. Bravo Company destroyed a total of 119 enemy vehicles and took over 800 POWs. Yet, many Marine tank battles were conducted at short range due to poor visual conditions on the battlefield. The 1st Tiger Brigade claims 181 destroyed or captured enemy tanks, 148 APCs, 40 artillery pieces, 27 AA emplacements, 
2,263 Iraqi dead and 4,051 captured after 100 hours of combat. A pre-planned counterattack by the 8th Mechanized Brigade of the Iraqi 3rd Armored Division attacked M1A1 tanks in the 2nd Marine Division S sector and was destroyed without loss, while the Marine 8th Tank Battalion destroyed other Iraqi tanks. The Marine 3rd Tank Battalion destroyed an unknown number of Iraqi T-62 tanks around Al Jaber airfield. Advance a platoon from the Marine 8th Battalion destroyed 13 Iraqi tanks in a battle near a defensive position known as the Ice Tray. Marine and Navy air power then inflicted heavy casualties on retreating Iraqi forces leading north out of Kuwait City. Later that night, some of the battles intensified as Marine forces surrounded the heavily defended Kuwait International Airport. Navy battleships offshore in the Persian Gulf pounded the airport hangars, terminals, and other buildings, leaving them a shambles of twisted metal and blackened concrete in an effort to rout Iraqi forces from the field. Marine commanders said that cameras in remotely piloted aircraft that monitored the bombings showed Iraqis literally jumping out of the tanks. After the Marines commandeered the critical airfield, special forces teams arrived to counter snipers and other pockets of resistance that remained entrenched around the large airport complex. Five Marines were killed and 48 wounded in the three days of fighting, Marine officials said. Marine M60A1 tankers had tallied impressive totals against the Iraqi armored forces. The 3rd Battalion claimed 57 T55S and T62S, plus 5 T72S, 7 APCs, and 10 trucks. The 8th Battalion destroyed more than three dozen tanks and a number of other vehicles. On the third and final day of combat the 2nd Marine Division would liberate the city of al Yara, then would go on to occupy the high ground on the Mutla Ridge cutting off the Iraqi escape route from Kuwait to Basra. M1A1 tanks would destroy the majority of the 166 Iraqi tanks that were claimed that day by the division. Iraqi General R.A. Adhamdani commented on the armored engagement, we had a problem of inflexibility of usage with the armored forces. A destroyed Iraqi reconnaissance vehicle at the tank battle that took place outside the Bergen oil field, February 1991. The United States Marine Corps destroyed 60 Iraqi tanks in this battle without suffering any losses. Destroyed Iraqi combat vehicles, on the battlefield, outside Bergen oil field, February 1991. A United States Marine Corps tank bears witness to burning Iraqi tanks and Iraqi soldiers leaving their fighting positions at a battle that took place at Bergen Oil Field during the first Gulf War. Marine artillery played a huge factor in disrupting Iraqi counterattacks during the first Gulf War.